Hello friends, Namaskar. Tax audit is a very important responsibility casted on the shoulders of a charter accountant that is a practicing charter accountant while he or she is conducting tax audit of an SSE as per section 44AB of Income Tax Act 1960. In this regard, you all would agree with me that wherever a tax audit is to be conducted, then the charter accountant is supposed to report the relevant points which are raised in Form 3CD, particularly pertaining to the assessee's business or profession which is covered under the tax audit. Recently, uh, there has been a discussion amongst the professional fraternity as to the applicability of Clause 44 thereof and its impact on the assessee's tax audit related compliances, tax audit related consequences. Through this video, I see Anu Bhatia going to discuss with you the clause 44, its nature and its impact as well as how this has to be filled up while finalizing your tax audit report. So my dear friends, I would straight away go to clause 44 without going here and there on tax audit applicability or not. I am assuming that from the beginning the tax audit is applicable. So if it is applicable, what is clause 44? The title or the description of clause 44 says breakup of total expenditure of entities registered or not registered under GST. See what law is asking for through this particular clause 44 is that as an SSE, whatever is your total expenditure, you are supposed to give the bifurcation of that expenditure into as to how much of the expenditure is incurred on those entities which are registered under GST and how much of the expenditure is incurred on those entities which are not registered under GST. Now, if I talk about the insertion of this clause 44 in the tax audit report format that is format 3 CD, this clause was inserted on 20th of August 2018. So it is not that this is a new clause, we have been looking into this clause but not reporting it. Why? Because this has been postponed from time to time and the last postponement date of this has finished by 31st of March 2022. So a very important question arose before the professional whether this clause 44 is applicable for tax audit reports to be issued for the assessment year 22, 23 or not. In my opinion, my dear friends, any tax audit report which is going to be issued on and after 1st of April 2022 and say for the assessment year 22-23 all tax audit reports will be issued effective 1st of April 2022. So prima facie in my opinion clause 44 is 100% applicable for all tax audit reports which are to be uploaded for assessment year 22-23 onwards because there is no extension further uh, in terms of postponement of this clause on or after 31st of March 2022. Further, whether the registration of SSE under the GST is a must for reporting of clause 44. One thing which I would like to attach here is, maybe you are in a profession, maybe you are in a business, if you are liable to get tax audit, then you are covered for 3CD and if you are covered for 3CD, this is not to be seen whether as an SSE you are covered under GST or not. What is to be seen is that as an SSE, whatever expenditure you incurred, that should be classified between or amongst the expenditure which is subjected to, which is incurred on GST related entities and which is incurred on non-GST related entities. And a classification of that is to be given in this particular clause 44. Further, a very important question, whether capital and revenue expenses both are covered under this clause. Very important question, my dear friends. And here the opinion is very straight that since the term used in clause 44 description is breakup of total expenditure. So it is immaterial whether it is a revenue expenditure or it is a capital expenditure. Both kind of expenditure should be offered for reporting in clause 44. This is a very important takeaway which one should carry along with him or her while finalizing form 3 CD. Now my dear friends, I would straight away come and discuss with you that how this clause 44 format is there and how to fill up this format for format of clause 44. Say as I said in beginning also that the total which is given uh, title which is given is breakup of total expenditure of entities registered or not registered under GST. So the breakup of total expenditure is to be given. Okay. 
of that entity which is liable to get tax audited and here the bifurcation of the total amount of expenditure would be that amount of expenditure which is incurred during the year. Now you can say that what is the meaning of the term incurred Mr. Vadya? Sir, in my opinion, the term incurred would take color from the provisions of section 145 of Income Tax Act 1961, which is providing that in the case of business or profession, you would choose the method of accounting, which may be cash or mercantile, depending upon the option of the assessee. And once that option is opted for, it should be followed regularly. So if the assessee has opted mercantile method, the incurred would take color accordingly. If the assessee has opted for cash method, the incurred would take color accordingly. So whatever is the method of accounting accordingly, you have to put up your total expenditure amount here. And this expenditure being bifurcated into expenditure in respect of entities registered under GST and expenditure relating to entities not registered under GST. Let me put it up through an example. Say a person incurred total expenditure of rupees 50 lakh during a year under various ads, revenue, capital, etc. Out of them, 30 lakh rupees was the expenditure incurred on those persons which are having a GST number and the remaining is incurred on those who are not having a GST number. So those on whom expenditure is incurred and they are not having any GST number, they would be reported under this column, column 7. And the remaining amount of rupees 50 lakh would be reported in column 6, which would be bifurcated into three parts. One, the expenditure which is relating to goods or services exempt from GST. Say for example, you are procuring certain goods from agriculturists or you are procuring goods from those who are having GST registration number. I should not say agriculturist. I would say those who are having GST number, but they are supplying such goods or services which are exempt from GST. So say out of 30 lakh rupees, 10 lakh rupees goods are procured from those who are having GST number, but they are exempt from GST. Then relating to entities falling under composition scheme, say 5 lakh rupees is incurred on those who are having a composition scheme related GST number. And let's say if I assume the remaining 15 lakh rupees is incurred on those entities which are having a proper GST number which is going in the normal course. So this 30 would appear under this heading 6 that is total payment to registered entity. Now some of you may object me. Mr. Bhatia, please see what is written here of is total payment. I would say sir total payment terminology would not fit into this particular format of clause 44 because the point 6 and point 7 these two added together would form part 2 that is amount of expenditure incurred on GST entities, amount of expenditure incurred on entities which are not under GST, these two will become the total of this two. So hereof, in my understanding, and please understand that this is nothing but a form. This is not a law. And form may have the mistake while the person who was writing this clause would have not this particular point in the mind that here he or she has used the term incurred and here he is or she is using the term payment. So that could be something which is erroneous, which may be corrected in future. But in my opinion, for the understanding of all, for the benefit of all, the term here should be interpreted to be incurred. Then only your reporting would be proper. Now, my dear friends, let me come on the million dollar question, which is very important. And everybody would like to get an answer to this question that how to submit the information under clause 44. Let's say we have worked on this. We have worked on the data. The question comes that whether you are going to report the total figure or you are going to report the headwise figure. Here I found that the recently issued guidance note on tax audit by C Institute, which was issued in August 2022 only, a very important clarification is given by the C Institute in terms of this particular clause in form of para 82.1, wherein it is written, a question may arise whether the above information is to be given in respect of each and every head of expenditure or only total expenditure is to be given. So say for an example, I want to do a bifurcation of my total expenditure of 1.5 crore into various heads. This may include, say for example, salary, this may include repair and maintenance, this may include contractual payment, this may include printing, this may include various other expenditure into 20, 30 bifurcations. 
So what C Institute is guiding? It is saying here the guidance may be taken from the heading of the table which starts with the words breakup of the total expenditure. Total expenditure. Hence the total expenditure including purchase, very important sir, purchase would also form part of this. As per the above format may be given, it appears that head wise or nature wise expenditure detail is not envisaged in this clause. So this is guidance note which is guiding us as a professional that please don't get into this thing that you are going to report head wise, you are going to report nature wise. So even it may be possible in my opinion that once I say that revenue and capital both expenditure are covered, you report both of them together. In this classification which is given in the various columns of clause 44 table. So a backend sheet may be prepared by the client which may be submitted to the charter accountant for verification. Once you are satisfied that such a kind of classification is clear to you, then accordingly you may take a call to report the relevant point into this particular clause, clause 44. So I hope this will be a, an important takeaway for all of us. Now I come to another important question which is which heads of expenditure may be excluded from scope of clause 44. Like somebody may be interested to know that okay, are there any expenditure while in the beginning I said that capital and as well as revenue expenditure both are covered. Now a question comes that okay, which expenditure are out of the scope of clause 44. Here again, my dear friends, I would like to take color from the guidance note issued by ICI on tax audit. Para 82.2 of it says depreciation under section 32, deduction for bad debts under 3617, etc. which are not expenses should be reported under this clause in any of the column 3 to 7. So C Institute has made it clear for all of us that okay, depreciation is an allowance, bad debt is an allowance or write off of the debtor. So these particular amounts of the debits in the PNL need not be reported in clause 44, so you may exclude them. Now similarly, you may have a question that okay, what about salary? What about wages? They can also be there in two question. So further C Institute in the guidance note says, Schedule 3 of the CGST Act 2017 list out activities or transactions which are treated neither as supply of goods nor as supply of services and thus expenditure incurred in respect of such activities need not be reported under this clause in any of the column from 3 to 7. For example, para 1 of Schedule 3 covers services by an employee to the employer in the course of or in relation to his employment and thus remuneration to employees need not be reported. So a very clear mandate which we can get here is that the remuneration to the employee need not be covered for the bifurcation of the figures which we have seen for reporting into clause 44. So these three we have a very clear idea now. Depreciation, bad debts and the remuneration to the employees. Maybe it is called as salary or maybe it is called as wages. Now a very important question which is further to be discussed in my opinion my dear friends is that okay why Mr. Bhatia there is clause 44 and somebody may say that okay if there is clause 44 and there is non-reporting or there is wrong reporting what are the consequences of the same which an assessee may face. Say you all know and you would agree with me that the clauses of form 3 CD are very important. And these clauses certainly have serious repercussions in form of processing of ITR of the SSC under section 143.1 as well as later during the course of assessment if it gets open. So a question came in my mind that okay what could be the basis of government including clause 44 in form 3 CD and whether that particular emphasis with the government wants to take from clause 44 is to connect with the income computation of the SSC or not. Sir, in my opinion or in my humble submission that there is, uh, this is my opinion which may be wrong in your opinion and you may improvise me if required. Since here the classification of the expenditure is asked in terms of okay, which of the expenditure of the total expenditure is pertaining to GST dealers and which of the expenditure pertains to non-GST dealer. And even one point which is not discussed is whether the allowability or non-allowability of the expenditure is important or not. In my opinion, that is not. I would like to say that this 
clause is basically inserted presently for creating a database from the point of view of analysis of the government to know that okay if there is a person who is getting his or her books tax audited or its books tax audited then how much of the expenditure such entity incurs on the gst entities how much expenditure it incurs on non gst entities so i don't think that primarily or prima facie this kind of reporting of clause 44 is going to have an impact on your income computation that is my understanding later you may find that there may be a different understanding may be developed by the government but i don't feel so because if i am saying if my institute is telling me that okay you have to go for total expenditure they are not asking me to report head wise they are not asking me to report nature wise and i am giving revenue plus capital expenditure under one category under one single row reporting would be sufficient then how would it be relevant in terms of analyzing my itr related data so that is my understanding further in para 82.4 it is also mentioned by ici that it may be noted that any expenditure that is incurred wholly and exclusively for business or profession of assessee qualifies for deduction under the act registration or otherwise of the pay under the gst act has no relevance in considering allowability of expenditure here i would again like to reiterate i have told this point earlier also and here i am repeating that whether or not you are registered under gst that is not important you have to simply report clause 44 now one more thing which i would like to connect here is sir no where in income tax law the deduction section for pgvp 30 to 37 it is mentioned that if you are making any expenditure on entities which are not registered under gst the expenditure would be disallowed so there is nothing like that which prevents you from incurring the expenditure on those entities which are not registered under gst so i don't see that clause 44 reporting may have that kind of consequence that it may impact your total income computation one last point which i would like to discuss here my dear friends for benefit of all what if the bifurcated data is not available say as a chartered accountant i am fully authorized to ask my client to give me that data or to his accountant that give me that data suppose that data is not available then should i classify should i qualify or should i give a disclaimer in tax audit report that is in 3c or 3cb and if that disclaimer is to be given can it be like this details as required by clause 44 are not maintained by ssc hence we are not unable to come i would simply suggest sir this is an answer to be given depending upon the facts and circumstances of the case if you are not comfortable with the bifurcation which is given or bifurcation is not available from the accounting system followed by the ssc the data which is maintained by the ssc is not so robust that it can give you that kind of classification you are left with no other option but to give a kind of disclaimer so the call is that of the charter accountant based on the facts and circumstances of the case so at the end my dear friends i hope that this video through which i have tried to discuss my little understanding on class 44 would be important to you and wherever we get confused we have to go and refer to c institute guidance note on tax audit so that is a key understanding which i wanted to spread through this video even so i hope this video you will found useful thank you very much for being with me wishing you all the best jai hind